Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make your own photo book, your DIY photo book. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Last week, I showed you a video about my newest photo book, which was the Southeast Asia photo book. And the reason why this book is so special to me is because I made it with my hands. And this is the first photo book that I created myself. And I promised in that video that I'm going to show you how I made this photo book from beginning to end the entire process. This is quite a lengthy process and it took me more than a full day to do it, mostly because the printer is really slow and it took ages to print out 110 pages pages, but also it was my very first trial at making my own photo book, so I was a bit more cautious about certain steps. So to show you the entire process in one video, I had to really shorten each step of the creation process and basically just try to show you each step in a nutshell. And I couldn't go into too much detail in the video because it would go on for hours and hours. In these 20 minutes, you'll see everything you need to do in order to create a book like this. And if you guys are interested in more in-depth tutorials on certain stages of the making, like the stitching process, the printing process, and so on, I will be very happy to upload some more detailed tutorials on that too. Before I even start, let me just tell you that there's going to be timestamps in the description below if you want to skip certain parts and go to the sections which are of more interest to you. Uh, in the beginning, I'm going to be talking about how I came up with the idea, what were the main decisions I had to make. In the next section, I'm going to talk about the designs, how I made some of the designs and the entire look of the book. In the next section, I'm going to talk about the printing process. In the next section, I'm going to talk about the piercing of the pages and folding them, putting them into signatures. The next stage is going to be about stitching. The following stage is going to be about gluing your signatures together and adding decorations such as headbands and ribbons and the mole. And in the final stage, I'm going to show you how I created the hardcover, how I made the card and how I put the entire book together. As you will see in this uh, tutorial, this is absolutely a handmade photo book and there are certain things that you have to accept when you make something with your hands, especially if you're not very experienced. And by that, I mean that certain things are not going to be perfect. Certain things are not going to look exactly like from a bookshop book but it's going to feel more personal. I hope you'll find this useful. Let's dive in. So step one is making some decisions and setting up your project. Before you even start designing a single page, you have to make some very important decisions about this book. The first thing you have to decide on is what you actually want and how you want this book to look like, what size you want it to be, uh, what orientation. And the second thing, more importantly, is what you are capable of doing with your given resources. When it comes to making your own photo book, first of all, you need to have a high quality printer. It can be inkjet. It could even be a laser printer. If you have a lot of money, you can have a silver light printer at home. The second thing you have to consider is what's the biggest size your printer can print because for the photo book that I created which is a stitched photo book you will have to fold your paper into two which instantly halves the size of the available space on your page. So my printer can print up to an A3 size borderless which means that if I fold that page into two it's going to give me an A4 portrait size photo book. So I decided to keep this process project quite simple and go with an A4 size portrait size uh, photo book for a change. The second thing you need to consider is whether your printer can do borderless printing. If not, you can still do this, but you might need to use designs with a white border around without full bleed photos, or you can just trim your pages uh, in order to get a full bleed look. In this photo book, I'm also using some uh, transparent paper or tracing paper to give that extra layer or dimension to the photo book. It also adds a little bit of elegance. I've seen this in a few books a few years back, but I never found a photo book company which would offer such a feature. And that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to go on my own journey and make a photo book for myself. For this book, I decided to go with um, a matte, archival matte paper. Archival means it's acid-free, so it's not going to get damaged with moisture and time. 
and the reason why I went with the matte option is to have that book look. I did try a few lustrous and glossy papers but I didn't like it in the book, it looks more like a photo album and I really wanted to have a book for this journey, so something that looks like a travel book and not a photo book. When you print a photo book you have to find double sided papers and again they are quite rare to find, there is not a huge selection but there is some selection. Now I'm doing this photo book in Affinity Publisher but you can use uh, Photoshop, uh, Adobe InDesign or even Word processors if you want to. I'm not going to get into much detail about the designs and how to set up a project, I've got separate videos for that on YouTube as well, links are going to be in the description below but I'm going to touch very briefly on the designs inside the book. So I set up my project for an A4 size page, facing pages as you can see and I have a one inch margin on all four sides. I inserted some page numbers into this photo book to be able to find what I'm looking for. As you can see the fonts I'm using are all serif fonts and for this specific photo book I really wanted a clean kind of uh, elegant minimalist but classic look and in order to create a classic look you have to kind of go with serif fonts and a lot of white space. I'm not a graphic designer, I never studied this, I just go with what I like. My map is following the same kind of um, idea, just a beige color, a very simple minimalist map with the locations and a little flag. And then this is the Sri Lanka and the map is going on my transparent tracing sheet. And this is going to be um, layered over this page in the photo book. So every time I'm using a vellum paper, it's going to be on top of a full bleed photo. I also introduced some itineraries here, uh, which is something that I do in my photo books. And then on the designs, you can see that I'm using a lot of white space, serif font, spaced out text. And I have this little line on the side with the date and the day of the travel or journey and I'm using very little to no background elements and background uh, patterns. The only thing I'm using is this watercolor, very faded kind of pastel um, element here just to add a little bit of color to the pages. And my designs are very simple again, not too overcrowded as you can see, but I'm showing the entire book in my other video where I'm showcasing the book, but this video is going to be about the creation process. So once I made my entire book and I'm happy with it, I have to kind of start printing it out. Now, because I have the vellum paper, it's not so straightforward. When you print a photo book, a stitched photo book, you have to put your sheets into signatures, fold them and stitch them together. Depending on the thickness of your paper, you can put up to like, I don't know, five or 10 sheets into a signature, but my paper is really thick, 240 GSM. So I am using three sheets of paper in a signature. Now, ideally, the software should offer you a booklet printing um, method where it automatically puts your pages in the right order. So when you print them out and fold them and combine your your folios into signatures, it looks perfect. Unfortunately, this didn't happen for me in Affinity Publisher, so I had to export this project as single pages and put them together myself manually in Photoshop. And the reason why I had to do it in Photoshop as well, because unfortunately, my printer did not come with a profile for the specific paper that I was using and uh, it wasn't the right color that I wanted to see. So the only way for me to fix that was a, a quite unorthodox method, but it did work. So I had to do some color correction to all the pages in Photoshop before printing out to get a much better color balance and dynamic range. But again, this is something that's so specific to your printing um, process. You can use color profiles, ICC profiles, depending on your printer driver and so on. I don't want to get into detail about that because I would never get to the end of this video. So I started printing out my sheets on my inkjet printer and I'm using A3 archival matte papers. And these are of course acid free. As you can see, my printer doesn't do automatic double-sided printing, so I have to basically turn the sheets around and feed them back into the printer. If your printer does it automatically, it's obviously a big plus because you can do the whole run in one go. The printing is really slow depending on the quality, so obviously I'm not going to show the whole process here. 
Once all my pages are printed, I have to start folding them. Now I'm using a bone folder. It's the, probably the best tool we can use for this, but if you don't have one, it's absolutely fine. You can use your fingers or something flat. Make sure to check your page numbers when folding the pages so that they're in the right direction. I made a couple of mistakes here. It's not the end of the world. You can always fold it out and fold it in the other way, but it's good to do it right at the first try because there's less pressure on the papers. Once you've folded all your pages, you have to start assembling your signatures. Now, this is obviously crucial because once you started the stitching, you won't be able to fix that. So make sure that all the pages come in order and you have the right amount of pages or sheets in your signatures. Once you put your sheets into the signatures, make sure to look through, double check it, and then flatten it down again, either with your fingers or your bone folder. Once all the sheets are folded into signatures, we have to start piercing holes into the spine of the signatures to prepare them for stitching. There are many ways of doing this. Some people use a saw on the spine of the signatures. Other people use a ruler to create a straight line to mark it on the spine. I'm going to create a single sheet template here that I'm going to use on each signature. So I'm folding a card into two and then with my ruler, I'm going to mark 12 uh, points on it one inch apart. Once I marked the 12 points for piercing on my card, I'm going to put it on a polyester block. You can use cork here or a pillow, anything that you can pierce through so it doesn't go straight into your desk or your hands. And I'm going to use an awl, which is the best tool for piercing holes into paper, but you can use a nail, you can use needles or anything you have lying around in the house. When I'm finished with my template sheet, I'm going to start using it on my signatures. Now I'm also going to put some arrows on it to make sure that all of them face in the same direction, so the holes are in the same place. I'm going to put it in the middle of my signature, making sure it is really flush with it and also that it's uh, not sticking out anywhere. And once it's in the perfect position in the middle of the spine, I'm going to start again piercing through the signatures using the template from the top and I'm going to do this with every single signature in the entire text block until I'm finished and then I can go on to my next stage stitching my signatures. Before starting the stitching process I put all my signatures inside a book press just to make them nice and flat for the stitching, you can use any kind of thread. I'm using a book binders thread here in white color. It's fairly thick and it's waxed, which means that there's a lot less chance of getting tangled and it slides better inside the pierced holes. You can use any kind of needle again. I wouldn't suggest anything too thick because it might struggle to get through the pierced holes. I'm using a medium sized needle. Again, it's for book binders. I usually start with a three to six feet long thread. The longer the thread is, the more chance of tangling and it's gonna get caught into things on your desk. But if it's too short, then you have to uh, attach a new piece of thread every two signatures. First of all, I'm going to put my thread into the needle and at the end of the thread, I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to go in through the bottom hole and then come out through the second hole back through the next hole, out, in, out, in and out. And this way, by the time I get to the top of my signature, I'm going to end up on the outside again. Now it's very important to keep your thread nice and tight all the way through so you can do this halfway through the signature. I do it usually a couple of times and then once at the end of my signature. When I'm finished with the first signature, I'm going to start stitching the second one. So where I came out of the first one, I'm going to get in through the first hole of the second signature, come out through the second hole, and then I'm going to put my needle through the thread in the first signature 
signature, do a loop around and go back into the second signature. And when I come out again through the next hole, I'm going to do another loop around the first signature thread. This way, my signatures stay very nice and tight close together. At the very end of my second signature, I'm going to tie a knot with the uh, beginning of my thread to make sure the ending is securely tightened as well. After finishing the second signature, I'm going to carry on into my third signature and this time I'm going to do the same again, going in through the first hole, coming out through the second and looping around the second signature, this time not the first one, so the thread of the second signature, going back into the third signature, coming out, looping around the second signature and so on until I finish all my signatures. When I get to the end of my last signature, again, I'm going to tie a double knot with the previous signature just to make sure it's tight and secure. And then I'm going to cut off the remaining thread. Next, I'm going to use strong PVA glue to make my first coat on the spine. I'm going to clamp my pages together to make sure they don't move and then I'm going to put a fairly thick uh, layer of glue onto the top of the spine making sure that it goes in between the signatures as well a little bit so they stick together when the book is opened. I prefer using a brush for this but of course you can use your finger as well if you don't have a brush lying around in the house. Once I'm finished with the gluing, I will have to let it dry for at least an hour or two, but best to let it dry overnight. In the next stage, we have to attach a mold to the spine to strengthen the binding of the book. I'm also going to add a ribbon and headbands to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to move my clamps to the side to make sure I've got space and I'm using a pre-cut mull which is just three times wider than my spine and there's a little bit uh, cut off from the top and the bottom. I'm going to put another layer of glue now onto the spine of my book and I'm going to attach the mull. After that I'm going to put another layer of glue on top of that to make sure it really sticks in. Then I'm going to cut a piece of ribbon roughly the size the height of my book and I'm going to glue it to the spine and on top of the ribbon I'm going to glue a small piece of headband which I cut down to the size of the spine of the book. I'm also going to add another piece of headband to the bottom of the book and then all I have to do is wait for the glue to dry. So now that my glue has dried I'm going to prepare my end sheets. So for this, I'm going to use a black card, which is A3 in size. Again, I'm going to fold them into two and I'm going to stick them to the last page and the first page of the photo book. When I'm using my glue, I'm going to only glue around one inch or slightly less than one inch of the black sheet close to the spine. And to do that, I'm going to put um, a piece of paper on the end sheet to protect it from the glue. Once I stuck one side onto the photo book, I'm going to let it dry for a few minutes and then turn it around and do the same on the other side as well. Next, I'm going to start preparing my cover. For this, I'm going to first cut out the pieces of board. So I'm using a two millimeter thick gray board here and we have to cut one sheet for the front, one for the back and one for the spine. Now regarding the measurements there again quite a few ways of cutting this. I'm going to add five millimeters to the top, bottom and the right side. So it's going to be five millimeters taller in the top and in the bottom than the sheets inside the photo book and the spine is going to be the same height as the board for the front and back but it's going to be the exact width of the spine of my book which is two centimeters in this case. Once I have my boards cut I'm going to cut a piece of book cloth. Book cloth is basically linen which has some paper backing to help with the gluing process and to make it stronger. I'm going to print on the linen so I have to print out my artwork which is going to be heat transferred onto the linen. This makes this photo book very, very complicated because so many things can go wrong and it's very difficult to see where it needs to go because you can't make any marks on the front. So I managed to transfer my artwork onto the linen and now all I have to do is attach the boards to the back of the linen. 
Normally I would attach the boards to the linen with PVA glue, but it can get sometimes quite messy and it can sometimes also bend the boards. So I decided to go with a different method here and this is a double sided tape sheet and that's going to be strong enough to hold it in place and then I can use glue for the edges. Next thing I'm going to do is chop off the excess of the linen and also cut the corners at an angle, leaving a tiny bit at the corners Then I'm going to cover the edges with glue and fold over the remainder of the linen and with my bone folder I'm going to very carefully work around the corners to make sure they're neat and tight on each of the four corners. Once it's done, I'm going to let it dry for an hour before going on to the next stage. Now that my cover is dry, I'm going to attach the book to the cover. To do that, I'm going to use again some helping sheets to make sure the glue doesn't get messy. And I'm going to first glue down the mull and then I'm going to glue the rest of the end sheet and place the bottom of the book exactly in the right placement. Let it dry and then do the same on the other side and close the cover on the book and let it dry. The last thing I do is make a little pocket for my memorabilia. I made this from a black card. I folded it and put some double-sided tape sheet on it. And I'm going to stick it onto the last page, the inside of my back cover. And now that my pocket is ready, I can put my postcards, boarding passes and tickets into it and keep them together with my photo book. Mm -hmm. 